In the last lecture, we have discussed some applications of han banach theorem. Today, I will continue the topic. You all must have studied Liouville's theorem in your complex analysis course. The theorem states that every bounded integral function is constant. And uh, by integral function or entire function, we mean a complex valued function uh, which is analytic at every point of the domain. By using Han Banach theorem, we can generalize this result for complex Banach spaces. Uh, now, the theorem states that let x with norm be a complex Banach space if t is a mapping from the set of complex numbers to x is the bounded integral function then t is a constant function. That means here we shall prove that um, any function bounded integral function uh, from C to a complex Banach space is constant. Let us prove this theorem that f belongs to x star that is f is the function from x to field of complex numbers and it is a bounded and linear function. And then f composition t is the mapping from c to c as f is some function from x to c and t is a function from c to x and so uh, f composition t is a mapping from c to c and which is defined as f composition t of z is equal to f of t of z for every z belongs to c. Uh, first we shall show that f composition t is a bounded integral function. Uh, if we show that f composition t is a bounded integral function which is a complex valued function then by using a classical Liouville's theorem which you have studied earlier we can say that f composition t is a constant function. Um, as t is bounded so there exists some positive real number k such that norm of t of z is less than or equal to k for every z belongs to c. We mark it as 1 and um, since uh, f is a bounded linear functional, so mod of f of t z is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of t z for every z belongs to c and we mark this inequality as 2 and from 1 and 2 we get mod of f of t of z is less than or equal to k times norm of f for every z belongs to c. And so we have shown that f composition t is bounded. For each complex number z and z plus h, limit h tends to 0 f composition t of z plus h minus f composition t of z divided by h is equal to limit h tends to 0 and here we can write uh, f of t of z plus h minus f of t of z divided by h and this is equal to limit h tends to 0 and since f is uh, linear so we can write f of within bracket t of z plus h minus t of z divided by h and since f is continuous so limit can be um, go inside and so we can write this is equal to f of within bracket limit h tends to 0 t of z plus h minus t of z divided by h and as it is given that t is an integral function and so limit h tends to 0 t of z plus h minus t of z divided by h this exists and um, since t is a mapping from c to x so this belongs to this limit belongs to x whereby f image of this limit exists and this uh, belongs to c because f is some function uh, from um, x to c and so this belongs to c hence f composition t is an integral function because limit exists means function is uh, analytic at point z and so we can say that uh, f composition t is an integral function earlier 
we have proved that this um, is bounded and so a composition t is a bounded integral function um, so by classical Logge's theorem f composition t is a constant function that means f composition t of z1 is equal to f composition t of z2 for every um, z1 z2 in c that means image of any complex number um, is same and so image of any two complex numbers z1 and z2 are same. So we can write f of t of z1 is equal to f of t of z2 for every complex number z1 and z2 and this can be written as f of t of z1 minus f of t of z2 is equal to 0 for every complex number z1 and z2 and since f is linear so we can write it as f within bracket t of z1 minus t of z2 is equal to 0 for all z1 z2 in c and this expression is true for all f belongs to x star and here we have taken any f any um, bounded linear function on f so this holds for any bounded linear function f and so we find that um, f image of t of z1 minus t of z2 is 0 for any f belongs to x star so by using um, Han Banach theorem we can say that this element must be equal to 0 that is t of z1 minus t of z2 is equal to 0 for all z1 z2 in c that means t of z1 is equal to t of z2 for all z1 z2 in c that means t is a constant function now we have another application of Han Banach theorem now the theorem states that let x be a nonlinear space and x star be its dual. Here x star is the set of all bounded linear functionals on x and we know that this is also a linear space. If x star is separable then x is separable. Uh, what do you mean by a separable space? x is said to be separable. It has if it has a uh, countable set set that closure of that set is equal to x. Let us prove this theorem as x star is separable. So there exists a countable set S um, containing function, uh, linear bounded linear functional fn for n belongs to n the set of natural numbers such that closure of S is equal to x star for each n belongs to the set of natural numbers n we know that uh, norm of fn is equal to supremum of mod of fn of x divided by norm of x x belongs to x and x is not equal to zero vector and um, since uh, norm of fn is the supremum of this set so uh, if we divide it by 2 that is norm of fn by 2 is not an upper bound of the set um, containing mod of fn of x divided by norm of x where x belongs to x and x is not equal to 0. So there exists some element x and dash in capital X such that x and dash is not equal to 0 and mod of fn x and dash divided by norm of x and dash is greater than norm of fn by 2 because norm of fn by 2 is not an upper bound for this set so we can find some element and which we are denoting here by x and dash such that uh, that element is greater than norm of fn by 2 since x and dash is a non-zero vector so there exists a vector xn is equal to x and dash divided by norm of x and dash here yeah, norm of x and dash is not equal to 0 and this belongs to x such that norm of x n is equal to 1 and mod of f n of x n dash divided by norm of x n dash can be written as mod of f n of x n dash divided by norm of x n dash because f n is linear and this is strictly greater than norm of f n divided by 2. 
So there is this a vector xn is equal to xn dash divided by norm of xn dash in x such that norm of xn is equal to 1 and mod of fn of xn. Here we have replaced xn dash divided by norm of xn dash by xn. So we get mod of fn of xn is strictly greater than norm of fn by 2. Since for each a natural number n we have a vector xn so we have a sequence xn let m be the subspace generated by sequence xn that means m is the set of all finite linear combinations of xn and uh, here um, we are taking the field as the uh, field of complex numbers so um, here um, scalars in the linear combinations are complex numbers. Let M not be the set of all finite linear combinations of Xns uh, where scalars are um, all those rational numbers in which real and imaginary parts are rational numbers. Since rational numbers are countable, so M not is also countable and and since um, set of rational numbers is dense in R, the field of um, real numbers, so um, M naught is dense in M. So to show that X is um, separable, it is sufficient to show that M is dense in X, that is closure of M is equal to X. Suppose if possible, um, let closure of M is not equal to X. Then there exists some vector x0 which is um, in x but not in closer of m. Uh, so by using the theorem which we have proved earlier, there exists a non-zero bounded linear functional g on x such that g of x0 is not equal to 0. Actually we have shown that g of x0 is equal to norm of x0. But uh, since uh, norm of x0 is not equal to 0, so here we can write g of x0 is not equal to 0 and g of m is equal to 0. We have proved this result earlier. Uh, now we shall show that g is equal to 0 as g of xn is equal to 0 because xn uh, belongs to m and g maps every element of m to 0. So, g of xn is equal to 0 for each n belongs to n. And so, norm of fn divided by 2 is less than mod of fn of xn which we have shown earlier. And this can be written as mod of fn minus g of xn since um, um, g of xn is equal to 0. So, um, fn of xn can be written as fn minus g of xn because um, both values are same. And since fn is a bounded linear functional, g is a bounded linear functional, so fn minus g is also a bounded linear functional. So we can write this is less than or equal to norm of fn minus g into norm of xn. And since norm of xn is equal to 1, so this is equal to norm of fn minus g. This implies that norm of fn is less than or equal to 2 times norm of fn minus g. Mark this inequality as 1. As uh, norm of g can be written as norm of fn minus g minus fn that is adding and subtracting fn. Then this is less than or equal to by uh, using triangle inequality for norm. So, this is less than or equal to norm of fn minus g plus norm of fn. By using 1, uh, this is less than or equal to 3 times norm of fn minus g. As closure of s is equal to x star and g belongs to x star and uh, that means g belongs to closure of s. Uh, so, we know that uh, there is a sequence in S which converges to G. So we can say that sequence Fn converges to G and so norm of Fn minus G tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. 
letting n tends to infinity in expression 2 in inequality 2. So, we get norm of g is equal to 0. That is g is equal to 0 functional which is a contradiction because we know that g of x naught is uh, not equal to 0. So, this is not possible. So, our assumption is wrong. Closure of m must be equal to x means we have shown that x is separate. Thank you.